Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. Once again, we are back with our weekly episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk. And today we are at this wonderful property, uh, the Dusit Princess, which is all geared up to celebrate the first anniversary. Today we are in conversation with the managing director, uh, Dorje. And he's been in the tourism industry for a while. He's uh, done a number of challenging things. He's been involved in other hotels. And perhaps this is the first hotel that he's more involved with as an international chain. Welcome to Ashwad Dorji, sir. Hi, Terence. So to start with uh, a little background in terms of your association with tourism and how did it all begin? Um, actually, see, my background before tourism was carpet business. You know, my father started the carpet industry for the last 30 years. It's been a long journey. And uh, our factory's name is Shangri-La Carpets and Handicrafts. And from factory, then slowly we went into the tourism business. That was the last 25 years. And uh, I was mainly behind the scene. I look after the purchasing of the land, construction. So it's been about uh, a year since we've started Dusit. Yes. But the construction has been happening for the last seven years. So it's been a long journey, yes. Learning every day was happening. So it's very nice, interesting, yeah. And in the family, you've also had uh, Hotel Tibet and Hotel Tibet International. Yes. So yes. were you also involved a little there? And so a little bit, uh, I was mainly in behind the scenes. You know, my sister looked after the Hotel Tibet and my brother looked after the Hotel Tibet International. And so when the Dusit started, I started looking after this property. So yeah, so every day I'm learning and it's been very interesting. Yes. So and starting this hotel, what led to the tie-up with Dusit, which is the international brand? Because the rest are family-run hotels and they're doing well. Yeah. So it's quite interesting you say that because uh, I have had a personal association with Thailand for the last, uh, I would say, 30 years. You know, I've been traveling to Thailand every year for my, you know, uh, yearly checkup at Brumungar Hospital. So there I noticed like Thai hospitality was at its peak, you know, the way they greet, their graciousness, you know. So I was just thinking, how can we get Thai hospitality into okay. Nepal and like, some sort of fusion together. So that's how I met the Dusit family. And since we are also a family owned business, so our core values matched and that's how we tied up. Yeah. Are you also associated on the board with Dusit or something like that? No, it's been, uh, I'm not directly associated, but it's uh, it's been a month since uh, I've signed up as a strategic partner for Dusit International. So that means like I look after any properties which comes up in not only in Nepal, but in Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Northeast India. So hopefully in the next few years, we'll be seeing uh, more, more those properties uh, all over Nepal and obviously like outside Nepal as well. Yeah. So and the tie up with Dusit, mm -hmm. how has that journey been launching? You've had experience setting up hotels, but then with the brand the coordination and what has that personal story been with Dusit Princess? So, like, you know, like this is a story, like I talk most of the time, you know, with my dad and stuff, you know, from day one, I've been telling my dad, like, you know, when we make a hotel, we as owners should build a hotel and let the brand, let the professionals Management. like the Dusit, like run the hotel for you. So this way we can like set up one hotel and then slowly, slowly move on to more hotels. That's that was my vision and slowly I'm following that also. And like yeah, interesting that uh, Dusit is a good brand and then like our core values match as I mentioned before. And yeah, so that's the way we are proceeding forward. How challenging has it been to set up this hotel, sir? Because now we're celebrating our anniversary, looking back at the last few years. I would say very challenging. First of all, the number one challenge would be the brain drain. You know, lots of people are leaving from Nepal like in droves every day. So as a brand, as our team, the learning and development, we teach our staffs and they work for like three to six months. And before you know it, they're like leaving for Dubai, Qatar. So that has been a number one challenge, how to retain our staff. You know, number two challenge, I would say, is the infrastructure, you know. So, as you know, the international airport, we need uh, more facilities there. We have the other two airports, the Pokhara and the Lumbini airport, which is uh, like a white elephant right Not now. Not fully operational. Yes. So, like the airport, the infrastructure has to be good. And uh, number three, I would say like uh, the banks, you know, they should 
bring the loan down more. The interest rate should be more down. So that's also very important. And also the luxury tax, which the government has imposed, the 2% luxury tax, without discussing with us, they just imposed it. So that has also been very challenging for us. And uh, last but not the least, our industry, the tourism industry, should be more, I would say, uh, it should be known as a priority sector. And also it should be known as an industry, you know, like how other like yes. cement, and uh, rod industry, they get that uh, what is industry status, and, yes, you know. So that, that way, our electricity bills come down, you know, so we can compete as well. And also, I would say, since I'm from a carpet background, the government gives the carpet industry a 5% uh, cash incentive. So For some it. sort of incentive, if the government can give us, like if you get like, you know, $10 million worth or $20 million worth of business, business. if some the government can give some sort of cash incentive that would also be very beneficial and very competitive i would say you know yeah as a hotel owner sir and now there are a number of properties coming up and a number of international uh, brands that have entered nepal more in the pipeline mm. what do you how do you see this phenomenon mm. i mean this whole situation uh, is that really helping the tourism or i think more <laughs> properties need to come up you know like uh, we have uh, the marriott we have the hiltons coming up so in Kathmandu, if more international brand comes up, I think it's better for everybody. The competitiveness, like, you know, uh, gets better. And then, yeah, there's a big market for everyone to play around with. Yes, definitely, we need more brands stepping in. And that will be beneficial, especially for the guests, you know. They get more, better service, obviously, yeah. So how do you see the tourism industry today? And what do you feel are the challenges uh, that we should be facing? Because perhaps we have an oversupply at the moment of rooms mm. and we need to create demand. How do you think we should go around that? I think that's when the Nepal government and the tourism board should get together, you know, like market Nepal as a whole, you know, not just as a cheap destination, but market it as like, a, you know, like a high end tourism, you know, like how Bhutan is doing, you know, like somewhere something is not working, you know, so we need to coordinate the government agency, the tourism board, Han, we all need to get together and like work as a team and think for the betterment of the whole tourism industry as a whole, you know, and that's how we can move forward, I would think, yeah. Coming back to the Dusit, it's, uh, it's all, it's a year, you're going to celebrate your anniversary next mm. week. What do you see as the major achievements and uh, what is the feedback from the market, from the local market about Dusit? I think right now, the like from the local market is very positive, you know, like people are like, uh, they really like a Thai food, you know, like that's the number one, I think, choice in Kathmandu, I would say, a soy restaurant. Soy restaurant yes. And then also our banquets and then our pool, the gym facilities. Yeah, so the market has accepted the Dusit brand in a very welcoming way, I would say, you know, so, so that has given us some sort of encouragement and we're looking to serve our guests even better in the future, yeah. So the journey of the last year, yeah. if you had to describe it in a few words, how would you say? I would say the journey was very challenging and very fantastic. Like we've got a very positive uh, feedback from the guest. And yeah, so like we hope to improve more and get more Dusit brand in Nepal and in the future. Yeah. Going as a last question, sir. Now that you're one celebrating yeah. your first anniversary, what would be your message to, to the market? Uh, I would say like, yeah, please come to Dusit. Yeah, we will uh, try to improve. And then uh, we have more brands coming up in the market. And hopefully we all can uh, celebrate Dusit in the next 20, 25 years also. Yes, Terrence. Thank you so much, sir, for having us. Yes. Thank you so much and all the best. Thanks, Terrence.